This is independent wrestling. This is an independent video game. But despite this being a wrestling YouTube channel, I'm pretty sure that you're probably more familiar with the game than you are with the wrestlers. But why is that? How is it that indie gaming has managed to take its industry by storm, meanwhile independent wrestling hasn't done the same? Well that's a perfectly good question to look into, especially as the topic of this episode. Because today... Thank you so much for the support over on Patreon to Dakari Carmen, Miss the J, Ron Hawthorne, The Reflection of Perfection, Mangy Stray, and Harry Flynn. As well as to the rest of my amazing Patreon supporters as you really do help to keep this channel going. Thank you. In recent years, independent gaming has managed to take over the entire industry, toppling that of its AAA counterpart. But meanwhile, when it comes to independent wrestling, well, we can't exactly say the same now, can we? After all, independent wrestling remains relatively obscure with only the most hardcore fans really knowing anything about it. But why exactly is that and is there anything we can do about it? Well, to answer that, let's start with some definitions. While there's no real official definition of what AAA gaming means, for the most part, it's understood that a AAA game is created by one of the major studios, and in some cases even mid-level studios, and that these games were made by large teams with large budgets. And while there isn't a hard definition for either of those, there's still a general understanding of what this concept is. Now as far as your wrestling equivalent to this, it's obviously WWE, but possibly also AEW and TNA counting as mid-sized studios. But the clear definition has to go to the word independent when it comes to professional wrestling, as an independent wrestler is any wrestler that is not signed, he's not contracted to a larger wrestling promotion. But when it comes to gaming on the other hand, well that's where things can get a bit trickier. But for the most part, it's understood that an indie game is one that's made by a relatively small team with a small budget and it's generally accepted that it's created by really passionate people. And this right here is why many speculate that indie gaming has taken over, as the original Oregon Trail was made by only three people, and one of which really wasn't big into computer programming. Roughly 20 years later and the first Mortal Kombat game was made by a team that wasn't all that much bigger. And so while nobody is trying to insinuate that AAA gaming isn't still doing very well financially, financially, it has been widely recognized that independent gaming has exploded onto the scene and shows no signs of stopping. And what many people attribute to this, in part, is that indie gaming is a return to the roots of how games used to be made, as indie games are made by a small handful of people who really care about making the best possible game they can, and they're willing to think outside of the box. Where AAA games, while showing some improvement recently, for a while seemed to have stagnated, becoming cookie cutter rinse and repeat games that were more about microtransactions actions than they were about fun. But just working off of this initial definition, can we say the same thing is true about wrestling? Okay, right off the bat, I'm sure there's some of you out there who are already rattling off in the comment section about how much better independent wrestling is than WWE. And while that is your opinion, and you are entitled to it, and I'm not even saying that you're wrong, I do have to specify that when it comes to widespread mainstream appeal and what makes the most money, it's not even a contest. WWE by far excels in this arena. And so, if we're going to have a realistic conversation about how independent wrestling can top its in industry like independent gaming did, well, we're going to have to make sure that we draw the line between opinion and fact. While if you just listen to bickering on the internet, you'll hear a lot of people saying that they thoroughly prefer the kind of wrestling that you see in AEW New Japan and in independent wrestling. The reality is that WWE makes way more money, has way more fans, and it's not even close. More than that, but the concept of what's better is as subjective as subjective gets. And of course, there are going to be those out there who say that the exact same problem that AAA Gaming had with it being cookie cutter and rinse and repeat is an affliction that WWE sees too. This of course is a blanket accusation that you could apply to anything if you want to, as another wrestling fan could very easily say that indie wrestling all looks the same. And in fact, Rip Rogers did say exactly that. But then it could be counter counter to argue that there is no such thing as independent style wrestling as the indies have a wide range of different types of performers, from your brutes to your brawlers to your high flyers and everything in between. But you could also say that about WWE too. You could have two completely different people stare at the exact same match and identify it as two completely different things. Because ultimately, the difference between the in-ring product for WWE and an independent promotion really isn't as great as many of you might think it is, no matter how passionately 
you feel otherwise. Okay, so if quality isn't the issue with independent wrestling like it is with independent gaming, then what else could it be? Well, perhaps it all comes down to accessibility. As stated in an article on Forbes.com, one of the primary reasons for the growth of independent game studios is the accessibility of development tools and platforms. And this is how things kind of start coming back full circle. As once upon a time, while computers themselves were expensive, they were still fairly accessible for certain individuals. For instance, the aforementioned Oregon Trail was created by young students who used the resources found in their own school. But throughout the years, as people became more aware of the value of the computer, they started becoming more restrictive on who gets to use it. After all, if they know there's money to be made, they're not going to let you make it without cutting them in on a piece of the prize. This was only made worse by the fact that games became more demanding. Higher graphics and higher demands meant a higher level of expertise was required to make games of the then modern era, which quite frankly was out of the reach of many people. However, what turned the tide for all of this is that eventually higher end computers became more available for everybody, with today's average smartphone being way more powerful than an entire room of computing equipment back in the 70s. Not only that, but the biggest boom was that all the major consoles also started embracing indie games too. But even though these games were now available on major platforms, they didn't all have a major price tag attached, making all these indie games not only accessible to those who make them, but also accessible to those who play them. And so, when you look at it, the world of gaming really is a beautiful story, as it's returned back to its roots in order to give the power back to the people. But when we look at wrestling on the other hand, that doesn't seem to be the case. Because if anything, it's actually the other way around. As the indies have a tendency to try and recreate as best as they possibly can the look and feel of WWE. Lavish entrances, grand costumes, and of course, a wrestling ring itself is always going to be an expensive property. And of course, WWE spends way more on their WrestleMania set than any independent company spends on a banner. But the problem is that it's not as equal a ratio as you think that it is. Because as I've talked about in a previous episode, the minimum cost of all the things that independent promotions have to pay for in order to try and keep their optics up to look like that of the WWE does not equal that to how much revenue they bring in. And so while independent wrestlers are worth their weight in gold, the cost of having a standard 10 match card in a venue that only holds 50 people at $15 a pop is never going to cover the expenses, let alone generate large levels of profit. Okay, so when it comes to a lot of independent games, not only are they cheaper to play, but many of them are way cheaper to make too. If only wrestling could say the same. As we just discussed, independent games are very accessible to your average gamer. But then again, so is independent wrestling. In fact, you could find a lot of it for free right here on the very platform that you're looking at right now. Although, even with that being said, all we have to do is take a quick look at an independent wrestling promotions YouTube channel, and then we look at WWE's YouTube channel and we'll see there's quite a bit of difference, with WWE coming out way on top. If indie gaming got an advantage because it costs less, well, it's hard to cost any less than absolutely free. So if that was the case, then how come independent wrestling on YouTube isn't doing better than WWE? Well, that right there is the answer. Because as we just mentioned, WWE is also on YouTube, and that is still free for them too. Independent wrestling doesn't cost less to watch, it costs exactly the same. If anything, there's actually a slightly higher cost for independent wrestling. Not monetarily speaking, but in terms of effort. When it comes to your local indie promotions, in order to find them on YouTube, you need to know that they exist in the first place. And you have to go out of your way to search for it, where the YouTube algorithm is more than happy to recommend a WWE clip than it is to recommend a clip from your local indie fed. Okay, so if it's not an issue about quality, but it is an issue about money, and it takes money to make money, but how do you get any in the first place? Well, what exactly do we do? Does independent wrestling have any chance whatsoever? Well, I say yes, it does have a good chance of making a bigger dent in the industry, but I'm not so sure about topping it, because the way I see it, it all comes down to notoriety. And there is one smaller promotion that has done a really good job of doing just that, and it's Ohio Valley Wrestling. With their Netflix documentary, a lot of people were exposed to OVW that wouldn't normally be. Now, obviously enough, not every independent promotion can manage to land a Netflix deal, but this is just an example of how a company can use another platform's popularity in order to boost their own. And I also have to say, getting this doc to chill on Netflix before Raw moved over was probably a good thing too, as this very easily could have been the YouTube problem all over again. And so, while this exact strategy might not work for 
every single smaller promotion out there, we should still acknowledge that it did work, at least this once. And sure, it's nowhere near on the level of WWE or even AEW, but they are establishing a bigger presence, and that is half the battle. The other half, well, that comes down to you. Because if you fancy yourself as a major wrestling fan, I think you owe it to yourself to really explore what professional wrestling has to offer. And I'm not just talking about WWE, AEW, and TNA, and I'm not just talking about New Japan and AAA either. But instead, I challenge you to really take a good look at your local independent wrestling promotions. See not only what they have to offer, but also find out what you have to offer them as a fan as well. Well there you go, my thoughts on how independent wrestling can be more like independent gaming. But how do you think we could bridge this gap? Let me know down in the comments and please make sure you're subscribed to this channel. And I also want to give a big thank you to all my amazing Patreon supporters and to you for watching. And as always, Dave knows.